Well, I'm just out checking the road this morning. We've been getting some really crappy weather, kind of putting a kibosh to my building project. Uh, torrential downpours, crazy wind, and I got the insurance guy coming this morning to look at the truck, and uh, I gotta make sure he can come up here, and I'm glad I'm out, because I've already taken two trees out of the road so far. <sighs> yep. So I'm glad I decided to come out. Part of the road is washed out. I don't know. <laughs> it's really not that much of a bother. I kind of like it. Well, it makes life interesting. It's all part of living up here. There's trees across the road all over the place. <laughs> Look at that. Quite a mess we got going on here. Oh no, <laughs> tragedy on the mountain. Oh, we're stuck, can't get out. You know what's strange? We had tons of birds here. I know you've seen it. And then when we had the bears come in, we would take the bird feeders in at night and put them back out in the morning. Sometimes the birds were here, you know, at the crack of dawn where the feeders didn't go out right away. But that little interruption and all of that changed the activity. We haven't had a single bird not even a blue jay in a few months now. Doesn't make any sense. I see the birds out in the woods when I'm hunting, but nothing here. No, no squirrels either. There was, remember the red squirrels? I had like 15 of them out here. And there's none. I don't know if it's just a bad batch of seed or something, but I don't know, we've had nothing. And I miss them. And I hope they come back. The bears, they can stay away. But I want to show you something. Check this out. Remember all the activity we had going on over here in the summer and through the fall? All the tree cutting and stump digging. Pushing up all of these stumps here. And I cut those twin cherries right there. Then the leaves disappeared. I cut that tree down, right? We had all this brush here, and then this was that really huge entanglement that fell like right here, okay? And look what was here the whole time. Look at that freaking hornet's nest. I can't believe this was here when we were doing all of this and we didn't get stung. Amazing. You see that? See what I mean by it's just a work of art? It's all paper. And they make that paper by chewing up wood and they mix it with their, the starches in their saliva and they spread it with their legs and their mandibles. And they make all of that. The lines in it kind of reminds me like the Damascus steel, like in knife blades or some of the old shotguns. Isn't that cool? Isn't that neat? What a work of art. So I'm going to get a pair of loppers and I'm going to cut it and I'm just going to put it in a clear tote for now so it doesn't get destroyed. Because I want to have that as a decoration in the screen porch. It's just the coolest thing. I mean, if I would have dropped one of those trees right on this, we would have got our asses stung. <laughs> yeah, so I discovered this when I was heading out through here to go to my tree stand. Now all the leaves are gone, and I'm going, oh my God, how did we never see this? It's just fascinating though, isn't it? And a nest like that is built in one season. It can, it can house up to like 300 workers. And then at the end of the season, all of the new queens, they fly off and they hibernate in, in little holes in trees and under bark and stuff like that. And if they survive, then they go off and they start a new colony with a new nest. Yeah. 
I don't know why they don't just hibernate inside here because all of these layers of paper would insulate them but maybe it's because they know how fragile these are and the snow load and branches and trees bending over and breaking would destroy it so maybe they know something that I don't I'm sure they do <laughs> yeah pretty amazing huh how they make that paper they've been making paper a lot longer than we have and I, I kind of wonder if that's where we got the idea you know to make paper from wood I wouldn't doubt it yeah pretty cool stuff to use a clear plastic for this. I get all my lines snapped before I cover it. Now I can put my walls up here and everything stays dry. And then after I have the next level all covered over, then I just run my knife along the inside edge and just this little piece of plastic stays under the wall. And then this can be reused. See? Not a problem. So that's what we got so far folks it's come out pretty good and it's been fun building it I'm gonna make some changes here I was given a big glass door unit from a friend so I'm gonna reframe that I gotta make this a little larger I'm gonna put that there and then I'm gonna make that window smaller that window is offset of the others I'm putting it as high as I can to use as a vent to let the heat out of there in the summer. Yeah. Going to be plastic panels on the roof and those other two sides. A little bit of plywood in the corners there in case I ever have to put a wood stove in there. Uh, I have a wall behind it and I put some plywood on the corners here just to give it more rigidity rather than just the frame structure. Yeah. Take a look from over here. Hey, This is what it looks like from this side. Yeah, be a lot of sun going in that greenhouse. My nice little workshop there. Yeah. So I'll give you another update as soon as my time will allow. All the best to you folks, and God bless. Frankie and the boss out of walking in the woods, living life happy and free. Tracks in the snow everywhere they go There's a pokey way up in that tree 
A beaver built a pond where they have some fun Taking life a day at a time Best friends until the end Frankie and the boss Frankie and the boss Frankie and the boss